All right, what is up my friends? Welcome, complete set interview for Foundations, the main set, okay? So we're doing the cards that are in play boosters that you can draft. There's also a starter set. I'll be doing a separate review for that later. There's about a thousand cards overall in this release, uh, including the full starter set and the jumpstart sets. Gonna go over all of it. Very exciting set for standard. Gonna leave it for five years. And uh, I go over more details in the in the first uh, section of this white. Check that out, of course. Doing all of it. We're doing all the cards in the set uh, in this review uh, for limited and constructed. We did white. We're doing blue. And then bronze, mythic, and uh, 10 new brews will be happening after the release of a set. There's no early access, unfortunately. Aww. All right, so first time here, like, comment, subscribe. We're gonna get right to the review. But first, I wanna remind you, we're brought to you by Team JB Hobbies, folks. The holidays are coming up, all right? Great, phenomenal presents for friends and family. If you want a present that'll wow the person who opens the box, check out Team JB Hobbies. Uh, just really awesome stuff. Simple little grain teasers. Big time puzzles and everywhere in between. Handcrafted, really cool. Check them out. TeamJBHobbies.com. Promo code Jim5 for 5% off your order. TeamJBHobbies.com. And they're here to bring you the set review and much, much more. Check them out, folks. All right. Set review time. Let's do this. Blue starts off with uh, a nice reprint here. It's not quite set of the wreckage. It is Aetherize. Format up for an instant. Return all attackers to their owner's hand. It's good to have a card like this legal. So you can say, I would definitely win unless they have Aetherize, right? So uh, definitely a card to be aware of in Limited. It's honestly a card that's like kind of weird because if you're super behind, like bouncing all of our stuff is okay, but not great. Very good against tokens. Uh, fine Limited card. Constructed, like probably not. You probably want to just have like an actual sweeper in your deck, uh, but a card to watch out for. Definitely a card to be very, very aware of. Um, yeah, just, it's a card. It's definitely a card. Next up is an offer you can't refuse. Of course, there are a lot of re reprints in the set. We'll go over this a little, a little more, more, more quickly than usual. Uh, one mana counter, non creature spell, gets two treasures. This is an interesting safety valve to have. Uh, no spell appears in the set, unfortunately. Aww. I know, I love spell appears too, folks. Uh, but as far as like, you know, the cheap way to stop a combo, or I guess defend a combo, this card does do that at a pretty bad race rate. So it can be also be a combo enabler where it can be a ramp spell if you like play a zero drop and counter it, but that's pretty fringe too. So weird card, eh, is what it is. However, as far as cards that I really like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arcane Epiphany, Jason Ingenuity with Upside, sign me up. Five mana, instant, draw three, costs one less if you control a wizard. Uh, I do love me a draw three for five, all right? I'm a control player at heart. Uh, it hasn't really been good enough in recent years for Constructed. Not going to stop me from trying, honestly. And if you have a wizard, four mana for an instant speed draw three is pretty damn good. Uh, now, of course, in a control deck, controlling a wizard is much more difficult to do. So this card is a little, a little lost in Constructed, I think. It just kind of like, at five mana isn't good enough. I don't really imagine a four mana, a deck that can play, play this for four mana and actually want this effect. Uh, but it's a great limited card, an absolute banger and limited, and a card I'm just like happy exists, you know. So it's cool. Uh, definitely a limited banger. Constructed, probably not, but I can dream. Archmage of Runes, folks. We got a big time sleeper card here. All right, this is a new card. It is a five mana rare three six. That's a big booty. All right. Good lord. And. Two incredibly powerful abilities. One, it makes all your instant sorcery spells cheaper to cast. And then two, most important part, whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, draw a freaking card. No cap. Just draw a card. And then draw a card again. And then draw a card again. <laughs> all right? I think this card in a control deck on turn six, you play this card with a negate in your hand and say go. They try and kill it. You defend with negate and untap and then win the game. That's gonna be a pretty common play pattern, I think. I think this card's kind of ridiculous, honestly. Uh, this card reminds me a lot of like Leer, Disciple of the Drowned, or for you real old school players, Dranlu, where it's a control card that just like is insane uh, at like you getting the game back into, into your control and going over the top. I think this card's a banger, folks. Uh, it's very hard to kill with non-black removal spells. And again, this is not a card you jam on turn five. It's a card you'll play on turn six or seven with a lot with your mana up. The cost reduction's here huge also. I think this card's great. This card's an absolute banger. Uh, in limited, obviously a slam dunk, windmill slam first pick. Uh, but I think in constructing this card is a real chance of being a being a, a pretty powerful and impactful card. That's why that's why it's my sleeper card, folks. Sleeper card for foundations in blue is Archmage of Runes. 
Big Finn Bouncer is next. Is this an Ixalan card or is this a, a new Capenna card? What is this card? Four mana four, a three two common shark pirate ETB bouncer creature. Uh, mana War. Mana War returns. Good draft card. You know, good tempo. Definitely uh, a three two for four is it's fine. You know, so it's a fine draft card. Nothing great, but cool card for sure. Uh, good draft card. Nothing more. Brian Born Cutthroat. Uh, a card that was is actually quite good. Uh, it's for a two one flash. Cast spell during their turn gets bigger. Uh, saw a little bit of play in standard in the flash decks, but there was like better options at the time. I could see this card being like a pretty reasonable card in uh, in standard though. Uh, it's quite powerful. Like end step this, untap, attack for two, say go, and just keep countering their things and gets bigger and bigger. Uh, I like this card. You know, it's cool with burn spells on their turn. It's cool with, uh, you know, opt and stuff like that on their turn. And uh, it's a merfolk and a pirate too, which can matter a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think this is the kind of card that will be really good against like newer players at FNM, uh, but might not scale up as well in higher level constructed. Uh, but it's good. Good card for sure. Also a great limited card. Again, a lot of the cards have been set of reprints. So we're not going to spend too much time on them, but it's a good one. Sefo and Ink Mage is not a reprint, but it does call back to Odyssey and the Octopus Folk. The metaphor, a 2 2, uncommon. ETB Surveil 3. That's a lot. And as Threshold. This creature can't be blocked as long as there are seven working cards in your graveyard. So it's a phantom monster with some upside. Phantom warrior, sorry. Uh, I mean, Surveil 3 is pretty good. Uh, you know, you can put a lot of cards in the graveyard. You can keep one card on top you want. That being said, a 2-2 unblockable for 3 is like only okay and limited. So I think this card is exactly fine. Uh, two week for Constructed. Okay and limited. Hmm. Slinquant Sky Mage. Four and a for a 1-1 one, one flying bird wizard. If you draw a card, put a counter on this creature. This is uh, kind of like your classic limited card where it's supremely weak up front, but has a ridiculous ceiling. The turn you cast this is just awful. Uh, play a 1-1 one, one and say go. But if you get to untap and play a draw three or think twice and flash it back or whatever else it might be, this card can get really big really fast and win you the game. So it's going to come down to how fast is the limited format and how much do your blue decks want a finisher. Uh... If those questions aren't answered positively, this would be a pretty good limited card. Otherwise, it'll probably be a little too weak. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of an old school card for sure. I think it was like an octopus in like War Spark or something like that. I think it was a one two also though. But but yeah, definitely uh, definitely a card that's pretty pretty fragile. Curator of Destinies this card's not that fragile. Six mana for a five five Sphinx can't be countered flying. When it ETBs, you factor fiction the top five cards of your library. However, one pile is face down. So take five cards, put them into, into two piles. Opponent picks one pile to go to your hand, other to your graveyards. Obviously, the face down pile is better than Factor Fiction uh, because your opponent gets less information to work with. Uh, this is the kind of card where because of the can't be countered text, uh, this is going to be a pretty silly mirror breaker in, limit, in Constructed uh, where you're just like, oh, well, I'm playing counter spells. You just play this card and you get a ton of value off of it. So definitely the kind of card meant to keep control decks down. Uh, it is pretty powerful. You know, 5-5 five, five can't be countered, so it's a good body to draw at least two cards, put cards in the graveyard also. Fun little mind game. Card's good. And these cards definitely going to see play constructed probably as a sideboard card. And it's a banger limited card also. It's also just fun, which is great. Draycatcher. I'm not sure about this one, folks, but we're going to go best in show. Uh, two mana for a 1-3 Vigilance Prowess. Pretty good body. You know, uh, it blocks, it attacks reasonably well. Prowess is a great ability. A little hard to kill with three toughness. It says, whenever this creature does combat damage to a player, put that many incubation counters on it. And you can remove three incubation counters from this to make a 2-2 flying drake. So, uh, if you just, like, play this on turn two, turn three, you kill their creature, play an odd attack, now you get a 2-2. That's pretty powerful, you know? Uh, this is a pretty good aggressive prowess card. Uh, I think, like, the getting this trigger is not too difficult. If you get one single 2-2 off this, you're really, really happy. And most importantly, it's just cheap. You know, cards that are cheap are really important. It's also a wizard. It's also a human. Some value there, too. Uh, I think this card's got a guess, honestly. I think this card's going to impress some folks. Um, I think it's a lot better than it looks. Um, and definitely a possible player in standard. Uh, great limited card, obviously. Uh, but I think for, for Constructive, this card's kind of cool. Could play well in, like, the Oculus deck as, like, a you know a non-graveyard threat. Uh, just good. It's good. Pretty durable. Like it a lot. Drake Hatcher, great limited card. Your best in show for Blue. Elementalist Adept. A little bit worse, but a common, obviously. Two mana for a 2-1 Flash Prowess. Great, good limited card, you know. I think one of the things I've said is that Prowess is pretty good. There's a lot of uh, instant speed stuff uh, going on. It's also a wizard. 
And this body is, it's okay. You know, it's not great. Plus all counter spells. Just an okay limited card. Nothing amazing, but solid. I think reasonable enough. I think if this is a 2-2, it would be a banger. The problem is that only one spell makes this a 3-2, which is likely to trade in combat. So you need two spells to get over the top, which kind of damps this card, I think, a little bit, but it's fine. Good limited card. Wizard, the meta for a 2-3. However, you draw your second card, put a counter on this. Um, this card is is okay. You know, it's a synergy card that's pretty bad up front. You know, in limited, these kind of cards just, like, don't really work that well. If you have a lot of looting effects or a lot of cantrips, cool. You can play this on turn, like, four and play, like, a cantrip immediately. Sure, I guess. But mostly just limited filler, I think. Not particularly excited. Essence Scatter returns. Cool. I think this card's already in standard, but I'm not sure. Uh, that being said, it's certainly a playable card in standard if things line up right. Uh, it's a fine limited card also. Nothing crazy. Just to, you know, reprint. Makes a lot of sense. Extravagant Replication. New card here. Casual players are going to love this one. Six mana for an enchantment. Beginning of your upkeep. Create token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Uh, that's cool. Honestly, it's sort of like a slow doppelgang. Uh, really fun card. Not really playable constructed. Uh, six mana do nothing is uh, ridiculous. If this uh, if this also worked on ETB, oh boy, we'd be, we'd be, we'd be talking. Uh, but as it stands, constructed not really playable. However, in limited this card, it's kind of a banger. It's really slow, but once you get that first copy going, if you untap it, this and survive, you will go nuts. So really, really cool. Uh, it's a cool card. Cool, simple, evocative. A lot of cards in this set, you're just like, wow, they haven't done this card yet? Cool. Bloom Trick is a banger. Uh, they went for an instant. Make two one flying fairy tokens of, with flying. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you do, tap a creature and opponent controls. Uh, so tap target creature. So this card's kind of cool uh, for a few reasons. Obviously, two flyers for three is like pretty good rate. There is some fairy stuff happening in uh, from Wilds of Eldraine, which kind of work together uh, with this. So kind of way to get fairies, kind of go wide like that, kind of nice. Also cool here is the templating. It's kind of weird, right? It says, when you do tap target creature, this card creates a delayed trigger so that you don't get blown out, right? So if I if they have a 2-2 two -two blade attacking by itself and I were to play this and target their creature, they could sack it in response and fizzle the spell. I would get nothing. But because it's a, it's a, delay, a delayed trigger, the spell will have already resolved, you'll get your tokens, and then the tap trigger will go on the stack. So you can't fizzle, which is kind of cool. So we also have a lore win set coming in 2026, 20, which is also cool as well. Card's good, honestly. Card's great. Also, you don't need to target creature to tap it to do cast this as well. Uh, great in a flash deck, greater than during curiosity. I think this card's good. I think this card's got a shot and constructed, and it's a great limited card. Fleeing Distraction. Uh, I love this card in limited. This is the kind of card that good limited players love. It's possible three for one on a one mana trick. Banger. A lot of prowess in this set also. It's going to be even better than usual. Great limited card. Big fan. Love it. Grappling Kraken. Release the Kraken. Six mana for a five six. It's got landfall. Whenever you get landfall, uh, tap and stun a creature. Uh, great limited card, honestly. You know the kind of card where like if you untap with this thing, you're gonna do a lot of work. Uh, well sized, good finisher. If your draft deck needs a finisher, this card will do that for you. It's really it. High Fey Trickster. Uh, this is close to winning the uh, the trap award, but not quite. Four mana for a four two fairy wizard. It's got flash. It's flying. You may cast all your spells so they have flash. Folks, four mana for a 4-2 creature is pretty bad. This dies to shock. This dies to a, a, a stiff breeze. Doesn't block very well at all. Uh, the effect is pretty powerful, but this card is way too fragile for any uh, any exciting effect. There's many better flash threats and many better cards in general with threats. Not really a fan. Constructive this card's, I mean, and limited this card's great. You know, the body's fine enough and does some stuff. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to cut down, but that's really it. So, yeah, it's just not very good. Homunculus Horde. Uh, also not very good, but very cool. Four mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, make a token that's a copy of this creature. So, kind of like Scoot Swarm for card draw. Um, obviously cap to a one for one of turns if maybe you draw your second card. Uh, so, you could do it on both players' turns. That's kind of cool. That being said, a few vanilla 2-2s two is not very exciting, but again, fun card, evocative card, good limited card. Uh, minions, right? Cool, Kind of cool, but yeah. Cool stuff, fun card. Icewind Elemental. Five minutes for a 3-4 flyer, ETB draw and discard. Uh, great limited card. Phenomenal curve topper. Good body, blocks well, great threat, card advantage. 
Uh, not a card I think you'll always play. I can imagine having like, you know, three or four good uncommon five drops or rare five drops and not playing this. Uh, but this is a card you're very happy to top your curve uh, on in your draft deck. Just a good card. No, Arisa, thanks so much. Arena Arcana Arisa, thanks so much. Imprisoned in the Moon returns. Old Ember Cool. Get back in your moon, all right? Get back in there. Downshifted from a rare. It's a three-mana enchantment. Turns a creature, land, or planeswalker into a colorless land. Again, a fringe playable blue card constructed if you're desperate for an answer for things. This guy can do that. Uh, and then a limited fine removal spell also. Raving your opponent's not great, but if you uh, are desperate for a removal spell, this can do that, like I just said. So that's what the card does. Bright card. Inspiration from Beyond. Demand for a sorcery. Mill three. Then return instant sorcery card right to your hand. Flashback for seven. This card is overcosted because of, of the fear of like combo applications, I think. It's pretty bad. Uh, at instant speed, this card is interesting. Uh, but sorcery speed, I think this card's pretty bad. So you can ship this one away here. Not really about it. Kaido. Kaido is a... Everyone loves Kaido lately, really. Uh, Kaido, blue, blue, one for a Planeswalker. And there is one Planeswalker in each color for this set. And uh, this is the blue version. It's a new Planeswalker here. A lot of them are reprints. And the mana for a three loyalty Planeswalker has a very powerful static. Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Kaido. So this can go up pretty quick. Uh, and like most Kaidos, uh, this is very good when you're ahead and not very good when you're behind. Uh, plus one, creature's unblockable, loot. Minus two, make it two one. Uh, Ninja, which plays all the other Kaido. And then uh, minus nine, get an emblem. Whenever you play a, whenever a player plays a spell, get a two one. That's kind of the scary part, right? It shouldn't be that hard to ultimate this if you are ahead and getting damage with small little creatures. And if you ultimate this, it's going to be pretty hard to lose the game. Uh, and if your opponent plays a spell, you get a two one. So this card's got some serious upside. Um, I think it's the kind of card where, like the other Kaidos, like it's not a Planeswalker you just play. Your deck needs to do the thing. Uh, but if you do the thing, it's kind of reasonable. And there are also now like a number of Kaidos in the goal. Uh, so Planeswalkers, we've had a real Planeswalker desaturation in the last few years. It's only been 1%. Now we're seeing more. And that sort of like Planeswalker snowball effect can be happening as well too. So great limited card. I think this card's got a serious place constructed. Uh, card sweep. Kiora, the rising tide. Kiora's back. De-sparked. Where'd that spark go, huh? We got a 3-2 three, for 3. ETB, careful study. Draw 2, discard 2, which is a pretty powerful effect. And then as threshold, whenever it's hacks, if there are 7 or more cards in your graveyard, you may create a 8-8 eight, eight legendary octopus. That's a very powerful effect, obviously. That being said, you are 3-2 needs to successfully attack and have threshold. So not easy. Uh, but it's possible that a 3-2 three, for 3 that just draws and discards uh, on ETB is, like, good enough. Uh, if you're playing a graveyard deck, trying to fill the graveyard for reanimate or whatever it might be, and then having that upside of like being a threat is kind of cool too. So I think this card's cool. I think this card definitely sees play constructed uh, in the right circumstances. Uh, it's a great limited card for sure, and uh, just kind of cool for graveyard decks too. You know, it's fine. Solid card. Could be cool in the Oculus decks and things with a, with a helping hand. Also kind of cool you can helping hand this if you're lacking a big threat and you're flooded on helping hands. So that's cool. Great limited card. Light Shell Duo returns. This card was in the set two sets ago. Uh, it's going to be a good draft common. Not great, but good. And unplayable instructed. Lunar Insight. We got a rare here. Three mana for a sorcery. Draw a card for each different mana value among non-land permanents you control. Weird card, right? So these blue card draw spells are usually played in more spell-based decks. This is a card once you, have a lot of, once you have a lot of permanents in play. That being said, not that hard to have like a one drop, two drop, and a three drop in play, you know? So... If this can draw, like, three or four cards, it's pretty excellent. The floor here is obviously pretty bad, too. So, like, if there's some sort of, like, very permanent, dense deck, think, like, a Caretaker's Talent deck, you know? Maybe his card has a chance, but it's probably too fragile. In limited, those cards, great. You know, if we just have a, if we just have a, you know, a, a th we draw three cards here, we're, we're happy. So, you know, yeah, you know, one Spyglass Siren is two types for this, which is kind of cool. Uh, fun build around, kind of cool art, uh, evocative of Ponder. Card's cool. You know, I think it's great, but it's cool. Micromancer Returns. Go to those one drops, you know. Uh, fun card. Uh, was legal for a while with uh, the spree cards. Now legal again. Plays well with the spree cards. It's really it. Saw so, uh, fringe, fringe playing control decks in standard. Probably going to remain there. And then limited if you have like two targets of this. I'm pretty happy playing it. Otherwise, eh. 
Mischievous Mystic. It's meant for a 2-1 flyer. But if you draw your second card, you sure make a fairy token with flying. This card's really good. Uh, like, you know, young power mancer kind of good uh, if you're able to trigger it often. Um, obviously a banger limited card because a 2-1 flyer over 2 is just fine. But a constructed, I think this card could definitely go off. Uh, this card makes you a token or two every turn cycle. That's nice. You know, pretty good. And the body's pretty good too. Also a wizard and a human, which might matter too. So outside, shot and constructed. Uh, great limited card, but it's a cool card. Mocking Sprite. Eh. Uh, this card wasn't very good in Eldraine drafts. I think at the on average, the set will probably be a little weaker than your average expert level set in draft, so it might be a little bit better. And there are a number of good spells in this set. Uh, one we'll get to soon enough that works really well with well this card. But a 2-1 flyer for 2 is kind of a hard sell, so it seems mostly like a fringe limited card. Oh, boy. Why? I don't know why we got to have this card for the next five years. Uh, Omniscience only ever does stupid things. Like, you're only ever cheating it into play. You're only ever winning the game when it's in play immediately. It'll probably do nothing, but if it does something, it'll be really, really obnoxious. Um, I guess it's kind of a cool card for newer players to, like, see what's possible in the game. But I really just don't love these, like, ultimate uncastable, if you cheated and win the game kind of cards. Uh, so I don't know, whatever. Some folks like it. It's cool. As long as it's not like a tier one combo deck, whatever, I guess. You know, it's cool. Don't put this card in your draft deck, obviously. Refute, cancel, and loot. That's fine. Not bad, honestly. You know, I would say that you know, there are probably better cancels than Inconstructed, but yeah, probably there are, but... Uh, and then in limited discard's fine. I guess I could see, like, a, a theoretical, like, Demir Reanimator deck or something like that that would play this card over uh, three steps ahead, but probably not. So, mostly a limited card, not very exciting. Run away together! This card was also in the last set. Um, this is a fine limited card. Not really too much more than that. Rune Sealed Wall. Big booty. When I, when I was a newer player, I freaking loved walls, all right? And if you also loved walls when you were a newer player... I want to hear from you in the comments or in the chat because I want to feel seen, all right? Um, do you it for an 06 Defender? Tap it to Surveil for one. I feel like if this card had like Hexproof or something like that, it'd be pretty good. As it stands, you know, yeah. Yeah, Wall Frost back in the day. Oh, yeah, Air Wall of Air, great stuff. But but yeah, uh, if you love Fog Bank, stay tuned, all right? Uh, but yeah, definitely, um, I think this card's a little clunky. Uh that being said, in Limited Vis Cards, super reasonable for your control deck. And then in uh, Constructed, I mean, no. But what are you going to do? A little self-reflection. It's a good thing to have. Uh, unless you're playing Magic the Gathering. The card's pretty bad. Six mana for a clone that can only clone your stuff. The cool trick here is obviously if you can just discard this somehow. Flash it get back is kind of nice. Uh, but that being said, it's like a, you know, mostly a limited only kind of whatever card. Not very exciting. This card was in, like, Ixalan or something recent, too, so. Skyship Buccaneer. Five minutes for a 4-3 flying. Raid. If it's ETBs, if you already attack this turn, draw a card. Great limited card. Uh, draw a card with this, you're stoked. And that's really it. You know? Aggressive, aggressive limited decks only, please. Spectral Sailor. Another great flash card. Soft play and standard. Uh, I adore this card. I just love the, you know, creature that can pay for and draw a card kind of card. Uh, card's good. Cool little card. Spirit Pirate uh, could be somewhat relevant. There are some pirate things happening in uh, in Standard right now. And uh, if you're playing uh, a Flash deck, this card's pretty cool. Also a cool sideboard juke card for control decks if those exist. Uh, but yeah, great limited card too. Uh, great mana sync. Love it. Real good Enduring Curiosity also. You know, just like Flying Men plus Enduring Curiosity could be a deck too. So it's cool. Sphinx of Forgotten Lore. Sphinx of Forgotten Lore. Trap card, folks. Uh, this card's not quite Snapcaster Mage. All right. Four mana for a 3 3 Flying Flash. Whenever it attacks, target instant or sorcerer in your graveyard gets flashback, length of turn, and flashback for the mana cost. So, this card uh, has a couple issues, right? One, it's kind of clunky. It is a 3 3 for 4, so much less nimble than a card like Snapcaster Mage. It also plays very poorly with counter spells, which is awkward because, like, it's a flash threat, which is really awkward, you know? So that part's not very exciting. 
Uh, and then you're flashing back what? You know, if you're playing a kind of flashy instant speed deck, you could flash back our removal spell, I guess. But I don't know. I think this card's pretty, pretty mopey. Uh, it could definitely maybe see play, but the body's not great. It's kind of awkward. The timing restriction is pretty bad, too. Has to successfully attack. Eh, I just think it's okay. Not super exciting. Limited card's great, obviously. Banger limited card, but constructed. Oops. Not really feeling it. Strix Lookout. 2 out of 4, a 1 2 Flying Vigilance. Pay 2, tap, and loot. Uh, just an okay limited card. Uh, looters aren't great in limited these days because, like, you just want all your spells and lands because uh, all the cards are so good. Back in the day, Merfolk Looter was like the stones because, like, half your cards were terrible. Uh, the, these days, uh, you don't really need that anymore. Uh, you know? So the fact that this loots for, for two mana also is pretty clunky. It is a flyer. It's kind of cute. It can help trigger some of your card draw stuff. But I think most of it is just a filler limited card. Not very excited about it. Think twice. However, a card that I am excited about is Think Twice. Uh, this one's a banger, folks. This is our bomb in common for the set for a few reasons. Uh, one, there are a few cards in this set that cost reduce. And if you cost reduce this card and it costs one to cast and two to flash back, that's pretty insane. Uh, very flexible. Also important for limited especially is that there are a ton of prowess creatures in this set. So having instant speed double prowess is really, really powerful, aside from just being a good card in general. So I think this card limited is phenomenal. Uh, there are so many prowess commons in blue that this is going to be a really good pump spell. It's also a card draw spell. Uh, constructive, this card's got a chance, uh, has a pedigree in Constructed. It's probably not quite there anymore in Constructed uh, with the deuce hanging around. Uh, but in Constructed, I think, I mean, in Limited, I think this card's an absolute banger, hence why it's our bomb in common for blue. That being said, the blue commons in this set are pretty bad. Um, compared to the white commons, it's like a joke. Uh, we're kind of back in blue being bad and limited, uh, whereas blue was great in the in Duskmorn. It's been pretty bad most of the year, and they're kind of going back to that. So, you know, good bomb in common. Uh, a card I personally love. I also love the old art, too, here. So, hitting on all fronts for me, I'm just... Think twice. I love thinking twice. Anyway... Another boomer card here with some great old art. Time stop. Six mana, instant, end the freaking turn. Damn. All right. Uh, this card's kind of cool. It's sort of like a mix between a counter spell and a time walk. So the, the common thing you do with this card is uh, your opponent casts a spell, you cast time stop. You get the counter of her spell effectively, and then also just take the rest of the turn, which is cool. Uh, you can also just upkeep it in Time Walk, which is cool. Uh, this card's kind of sweet because it, it doesn't counter the spell. So this can counter uncounterable spells by just ending the turn. Uh, if you are doing some sort of like, you know, loop effect, you can keep time stopping. Although this exiles too, which is important to note. Uh, so it is cool, honestly. Uh, cool card. Definitely a fringe possible player constructed, uh, but probably not. This could also empty a big, ugly stack, which is kind of cool. A lot of abilities on it. Uh, card's cool. Good against Eldrazi. Which is not that relevant, I guess. Uh, but yeah, cool card. In limited, this card is like, I think, fine, but not amazing. I uh, constructed again, fringe playable, but cool card, great art. Just a fun, evocative card. If I was a newer player and I, I opened this, I'd be like, holy shit. What? Which is, I think, a lot of the, the set is going for, which is great. Salarian Terror Returns. I love this card. Uh, banger. Great card. Sees some play constructed. It's a great limited card. Uh, just great. Great up the beanstalk. I think it's already in standard, so like, whatever, but cool. Uncharted Voyage, the metaphor for an instant. Uh, this is your, this card's in literally every set at this point. Uh, you know, bad blue removal spell. Fine and limited, not very exciting, is it? It is. Witness Protection Returns, really fun, evocative card. Uh, legitimate business person, you know, you gotta love it. You gotta, let's hear it for this card, all right? Just good stuff. Just good stuff. And uh, certainly a playable constructed card. A pretty good limited card. Not nearly as good as uh, as the toy one from the last set. Uh, unable to scream because a creature having power is a lot better than not having power. Uh, but good limited card. Possible uh, possible draft card. And uh, that's that. Why is Aegis Turtle here at the end? <laughs> All right. Well, 
So much for being alphabetical, I guess. That one's on me. My bad. I miss a space. My bad. Well, Angus Turtle's here also. Um, slow, slow and late to the party. Old Turtle. Yep, that was unintentional. That was a funny joke, right? Uh, this is a card that probably shouldn't be in your draft deck, and that's it. Honestly, you know, is what it is. So, to recap for Blue, best in show, Drake Hatcher. Archmage of Ruins is our sleeper card. Sphinx of Forgotten Lore is our, our trap card. And Think Twice is our bombing common. Folks, Black's coming up. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the show. A lot of work goes into these set reviews. And I really appreciate you all for watching and hanging out. Make sure you support the content. And uh, let's go. Black's up next.